The Daxamite soldier's skull crunched sickeningly as Jack's power armor crushed the alien's head to pulp, green blood splattering across the human's silver chest plate. Jack strode purposefully towards the Galactic Council chamber doors, the normally pristine white floor slick with Daxamite blood and ichor. Three months of brutal Daxamite invasion had reduced Earth to rubble and slaughtered billions. But no matter how many humans the Daxamites killed, more always rose up with a berserker fury the aliens could not comprehend. The council guards moved to block Jack, but stepped aside, mandibles clicking nervously, as the blood-soaked human ambassador glared at them with barely contained rage. Jack kicked open the chamber doors with a bang. The various insectoid, reptilian and avian counselors turned their heads in shock. Jack would make these smug aliens understand the human's plight. He would force the advanced races to aid humanity against the Daxamite menace. The alternative, Earth's fall, and the extinction of the human race, was unthinkable. The counselors would help us, or by God they would reap the whirlwind and learn too late why no one in the galaxy fucks with humanity. James crouched behind the crumbling concrete wall, his heart pounding in his chest. The acrid smell of smoke and burnt flesh hung heavy in the air. In the distance, the guttural clicks and screeches of the Daxamite invaders echoed through the ruined city streets. He checked his rifle for the hundredth time, ensuring the magazine was full. Satisfied, James turned to his team, their faces smeared with grime and determination. All right, listen up, he whispered, his voice rough from days of fighting. Intel says there's a Daxamite command center two clicks north of here. It's heavily guarded, but if we can get inside, we might be able to find out what these bastards are planning. Sarah, his second in command, nodded grimly. We'll need to move fast and quiet. They outnumber us ten to one. James grinned humorlessly. Since when has that ever stopped us? We've been giving these bugs hell for weeks now. They thought they could just waltz in and take our planet. They've got another thing coming. The team moved out, sticking to the shadows and debris. They knew these streets like the back of their hands, every alleyway and collapsed building a potential hiding spot or ambush point. As they neared the command center, James signaled for the team to halt, Daxamite guards patrolled the perimeter, their insectoid bodies clad in shimmering exoskeletons. Mikhail, you're up, James whispered. The sniper nodded, settling into position. His rifle cracked twice and two Daxamites dropped, Ikor splattering the ground. Move, James hissed and the team surged forward. They dispatched the remaining guards with ruthless efficiency, their bullets finding the weak points in the alien's armor. Inside the command center, chaos erupted as the humans stormed in, guns blazing. Daxamite technicians screeched in alarm, scrambling for cover. James barked orders, directing his team to secure the perimeter and download any intel they could find. Sarah hacked into a Daxamite terminal, her fingers flying over the alien keys. Got it, she crowed triumphantly, holding up a data drive. Troop movements, supply lines, everything we need to hit these fuckers where it hurts. James grinned as he planted explosive charges around the room. Good work. Now let's get the hell out of here before reinforcements arrive. They barely made it out before the command center erupted in a ball of fire, the shockwave knocking them off their feet. James picked himself up, dusting off his fatigues. The Daxamites want Earth, he growled, staring at the burning ruins. They'll have to pry it from our cold, dead hands. As the resistance fighters melted back into the city's shadows, the Daxamite commanders hissed in frustration. These humans were proving far more troublesome than anticipated. They fought with a savagery and cunning that belied their primitive technology. The invasion had been meant to be swift and decisive. But now, as the Daxamites surveyed the smoldering wreckage of their command center, a flicker of doubt crept into their hive mind. Conquering Earth would not be as easy as they had thought. Jack stalked through the space station's gleaming corridors, his boots thudding against the polished metal floor. The Galactic Council's opulent surroundings stood in stark contrast to the devastation he had witnessed on Earth. The sleek, curved walls and high, arched ceilings seemed to mock the suffering of his people. 
he approached a delegation of insectoid aliens, their compound eyes glittering in the artificial light. Ambassador, he called out, his voice echoing in the cavernous hall, a moment of your time. The insectoids chittered amongst themselves, their antennae twitching. Ah, the human representative, the lead delegate clicked. We have heard of your planet's plight, a terrible tragedy, to be sure. Jack clenched his jaw. Tragedy? It's a goddamn massacre. The Daxamites are slaughtering my people by the millions. We need the Council's help, and we need it now. The insectoid's mandibles worked in what might have been a sympathetic gesture. The Council is deeply concerned, of course, but we must consider the potential repercussions of direct intervention. The Daxamites are a formidable race, and we cannot risk a full-scale galactic war. Jack's eyes narrowed. So you'll just sit back and watch as the Daxamites exterminate us? Is that the kind of allies you are? The delegate's antennae drooped. I am sorry, Ambassador, the Council's hands are tied. Jack turned on his heel, disgust etched on his features. He would find no help here among these cowardly bureaucrats. As he stalked away, a reptilian alien in flowing robes intercepted him. Ambassador, the alien hissed, his forked tongue flicking out. I am Scar. I have been following your efforts to rally support for your world. Jack eyed the reptilian warily. And are you here to offer empty platitudes as well? Escar shook his head. On the contrary, I believe your cause is just. The Daxamites must be stopped and the Council's inaction is shameful. A glimmer of hope sparked in Jack's chest. You'll help us then. The reptilian nodded. I have contacts, resources. I can secure weapons, supplies, even ships for your resistance, but we must be discreet. There are those on the Council who would not take kindly to my interference. Jack clasped Iskar's clawed hand. Discretion is my middle name. Just get me what my people need and we'll put it to good use. As the two conspirators parted ways, neither noticed the small floating drone that hovered in a shadowed alcove nearby. Its single, unblinking eye had recorded every word of their exchange. In his private chambers, Caxil, the council chairman, watched the footage with a deepening frown. The human was proving to be a thorn in his side, stirring up dissent and challenging the council's authority. He tapped a button on his desk, and a holographic image of his chief of security flickered to life. Chairman, the security chief said, bowing his head, how may I serve you? Caxel steepled his fingers. The human ambassador. He's been making waves, rallying support for his doomed planet. I want him monitored around the clock. If he steps out of line, if he even breathes in a way I don't like, I want to know about it. The security chief nodded. It will be done, Chairman. We'll keep a close eye on him. Caxel leaned back in his chair, his eyes glittering coldly. The human would learn the price of defying the council. One way or another, he would be brought to heel. James grinned as he opened the crates of weapons and supplies that had mysteriously appeared at their hidden base overnight. Sleek rifles, powerful explosives, and advanced tactical gear gleamed under the harsh fluorescent lights. Looks like Christmas came early, boys and girls, he said, tossing a rifle to Sarah, courtesy of our guardian angel up in space. Sarah ran her hands over the weapon, a fierce smile spreading across her face. With these, we can finally take the fight to those Daxamite bastards. James nodded, his eyes gleaming with determination. Damn right, it's time we showed them what happens when you mess with humanity. Over the next few weeks, the Resistance launched a series of devastating attacks against the Daxamites. Supply depots exploded in balls of fire, communication relays crashed to the ground in sparking heaps, and Daxamite patrols found themselves ambushed at every turn. But James had his sights set on a bigger target, the Daxamite mothership that loomed over the earth like a malevolent shadow. If they could take that out, it would cripple the Daxamite command structure and throw their whole invasion into disarray. He gathered his team around a battered table, a holographic display of the mothership rotating slowly above it. All right, here's the plan, he said pointing at the schematic. We'll infiltrate through this service hatch near the engine room. Mikhail, you'll cover our entry from this vantage point. 
Sarah, you're on hacking duty. We need you to disable their internal defenses. The rest of you, we're going straight for the reactor core. We'll plant the charges and blow this thing sky high. The team nodded grimly, their faces set with determination. They knew the risks, knew that this could easily be a one-way trip, but they also knew what was at stake, the fate of their entire species. The assault on the mothership was chaos incarnate. Alarms blared as the humans breached the hull, Daxamite soldiers swarming to intercept them. Gunfire filled the corridors, the acrid scent of smoke and burning insectoid flesh choking the air. But James and his team pushed forward with single-minded focus, cutting down any Daxamite that stood in their way. Sarah's hacking skills proved invaluable, doors slamming shut on pursuing alien soldiers and defense turrets, suddenly switching allegiance to mow down their former masters. In the heart of the mothership, James planted the charges on the reactor, sweat dripping down his face as he armed the detonator. Time to go, he yelled, and the team raced for the extraction point, dodging energy blasts and leaping over the corpses of fallen Daxamites. They barely made it out before the mothership exploded, a brilliant flash of light illuminating the sky as the massive vessel broke apart, raining flaming debris down on the scarred earth below. Cheers erupted across the resistance comm channels as news of the mothership's destruction spread. It was a monumental victory, a beacon of hope in the dark days of the invasion. But the Daxamites' retaliation was swift and brutal. Enraged by the loss of their mothership, they unleashed a devastating biological weapon on Earth's remaining population centers. A sickly green mist descended on the cities, seeping into lungs and poisoning the blood. Millions perished in agony, their bodies convulsing and flesh sloughing off in wet chunks. Those who survived were left weakened, racked by fever and delirium. James stared at the devastated landscape, his eyes hollow with grief and exhaustion. So many lives lost, so much suffering, but he couldn't let despair consume him. The Daxamites may have struck a terrible blow, but humanity was not beaten yet. He gathered the survivors, those still able to fight. They think this will break us, he growled, his voice raw with emotion. They think we'll just roll over and die, but they don't know human tenacity, our stubborn refusal to quit. We'll adapt, we'll overcome, and we'll make them pay for every inch of our planet they've defiled. The resistance fighters nodded, a grim resolve settling over them. They would mourn the dead, but they would honor their sacrifice by continuing the fight. The Daxamites had unleashed hell, but the humans would show them what it meant to survive in the face of annihilation. Earth may be battered and bleeding, but as long as even one human drew breath, the Daxamites would know no peace on its ravaged surface. Whispers of the humans' tenacity spread through the galaxy like wildfire. The story of a primitive species, armed with nothing but guts and determination, standing up to the mighty Daxamite Empire, captured the imagination of even the most jaded alien races. Scar, the reptilian diplomat, found himself inundated with messages of support from his constituents. The humans have shown us what bravery looks like, one message read. We cannot stand idly by while they fight for their survival. Emboldened by the groundswell of support, Scar redoubled his efforts to rally the Galactic Council. He met with representatives from a dozen worlds, sharing tales of human heroism and sacrifice. Slowly but surely, he chipped away at the Council's apathy, convincing more and more members to pledge their support to the human cause. Caxil, the Council Chairman, watched these developments with growing concern. The human ambassador, Jack, had become a thorn in his side, and now Scar was undermining his authority at every turn. He summoned his chief of security to his chambers, his eyes narrowed with suspicion. I want you to find out what Scar is up to, he hissed. He's been meeting with council members behind closed doors, and I don't like it. If he's plotting against me, I want to know about it. The chief of security bowed his head. As you command, chairman. On Earth, James and his team worked tirelessly to analyze the Daxamite's biological weapon. They collected samples of the sickly green mist, running tests and simulations to unravel its secrets. Sarah, the team's resident tech expert, hunched over a microscope, her brow furrowed in concentration. Suddenly, 
Her eyes widened. I think I've got something, she exclaimed, waving James over. James peered into the microscope, his heart racing. What am I looking at? he asked. Sarah grinned. The Daxamites may be advanced, but they're not infallible. Their bioweapon has a weakness, a specific frequency of electromagnetic radiation that disrupts its molecular structure. If we can create a device that emits that frequency, we can neutralize the mist and protect our people. James clapped Sarah on the shoulder, a fierce grin spreading across his face. You're a genius, Sarah. Let's get to work. The team labored day and night, scavenging components from downed Daxamite tech and jury-rigging a makeshift emitter. It was a race against time, as more and more humans succumbed to the bioweapon's effects every day. But finally, after weeks of tireless effort, they had a working prototype. James stood before a group of haggard survivors, the emitter humming in his hands. This is it, he said, his voice ringing with conviction. This is our chance to turn the tide. The Daxamites think they've broken us, but we'll show them what humanity is made of. We'll take the fight to their doorstep, and we'll make them regret the day they ever set foot on our world. The survivors cheered, their spirits lifted by James's words. They knew the road ahead would be long and hard, but they were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the resistance prepared for their final assault, Jack stood before the Galactic Council, his heart pounding with anticipation. The evidence of humanity's triumph over the Daxamites was irrefutable. The destroyed mothership, the neutralized bioweapon, the countless Daxamite corpses littering Earth's surface. Caxiel, his face twisted with barely contained rage, tried to dismiss Jack's testimony. This proves nothing, he sputtered. The humans got lucky, that's all. They're still a primitive, backward species, unfit for a seat on this council. But Scar and his allies would not be silenced. They spoke passionately of humanity's courage and resilience, of their unwavering spirit in the face of overwhelming odds. In the end, the Council had no choice but to acknowledge the truth. Earth had proven itself a force to be reckoned with, and humanity deserved a place among the stars. As Jack took his seat at the Council table, his heart swelled with pride. The sacrifices of James and his team, of all the brave men and women who had fought and died for Earth's freedom, had not been in vain. And back on Earth, as the Daxamite ships fled the planet's orbit, and the resistance fighters emerged from their bunkers to survey the devastated landscape, a sense of hope began to take root. The road to recovery would be long and hard, but they had proven that humanity could overcome any obstacle, face any challenge. James, his face streaked with grime and blood, gazed up at the sky, a smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. We did it, he whispered, his voice hoarse with emotion. We showed them what we're made of, and we'll keep showing them, every day, for as long as it takes. The survivors gathered around him, their faces alight with joy and relief. They had lost so much, but they had gained something invaluable. The knowledge that the human spirit could never be broken, that hope could never be extinguished. As the sun rose over the shattered remnants of Earth's cities, a new chapter in human history began, one of rebuilding, of healing, and of reaching for the stars. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.